um, it's it's mathematical. It's um, it's a maths video. This is, but um, there's a lot of applications of Gaussian integrals, and I'll show you one at the end. Okay, to begin, if we have an integral like this, you can see it's easy to evaluate. We've got a derivative here multiplied by an exponential e to the f of x multiplied by f dashed of x, and we we'll can see. Um, or, um, very simply, this is equal to e. Uh, the integral of this is e to the f of x, and we know this because from the chain rule, um, if you differentiate this side, then then you do indeed get f dashed of x e to the f of x, and that's just from the chain rule. Um, so we, we, the derivative comes down, and of, of course the um, exponential itself stays the same. So that's very very simple. Just a property um, of the different uh, of um, um, the exponentials. Um, okay, so here's an example of this. Um, e to the minus 2x, e to the minus x squared dx, and you'll see that this equals e to the minus x squared. Um, um, and if we differentiate this, then we get this back. So very simple. Um, I've, I haven't put my constants of integration in. I really should if I wanted to be rigorous. And I'm going to be using limits for the rest of the video anyway, so um, I've left the constants of integration out. Okay, now the aim of this video is to integrate this thing here. Um, from infinity to minus infinity. I put these limits in because it's actually impossible, and I mean it's it's it is technically impossible to integrate um, this generally, um, and and uh, well you, you 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 can't you can't do it in terms of standard functions. But I'm going to show you how to do this. Now you notice there's no derivative in front of the exponential, so we cannot integrate it in the usual way. Um, this is called a Gaussian integral. Um, there is a way to integrate it, and that's what we're going to do now. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is write this integral down. It's not the same as the one above, but it's it's just a it's just a different um, it's a double integral and you'll see um two integrals with limits infinity to minus infinity and then I've got e to the minus x squared plus y squared dx dy so I've got two variables it's a double integral. And I've written this down because you can see that this integral factorizes. From the property of the exponential this is equal to e to the minus x squared multiplied by e to the minus y squared. So you can see that we've got a function of just x and a function of just y and the limits um, don't involve x and y, so we can factorise that into this form here. Now you'll notice if we let x equal y, then this thing is equal to the well, the square root of this thing is equal to actually root in, um, infinity. Um, is sorry, the, the square root of this thing here is equal to the integral of infinity to minus infinity of e to the minus x squared. Um, now it might sound a bit of an odd way of doing it. I've just let x equal y work out, I just have them both being x. Um, and the reason is, um, I'm going to use a double integral in order to evaluate this thing. So I'm going to transform my x, y space into a different space. Um, so I need it to be in this form. It's just, a, it's just a little sort of tweak that I've done. I haven't really done anything really. We, we know that that does equal that. So um, this, is, this is easy to integrate in this form. So I've just... Um, I've just written down what this does equal this, so we can so we can um, see that this this does work. Okay, so now now we've established this that this integral that this integral works, um, and we're, we're going to be taking the root of this integral at the end um, from this. So um, now I'm going to me, um, transform this um, this double integral into something that I can integrate. Um, so I'm going to use polar coordinates um, just to refresh your polar, how polar coordinates work. If we go down here, we've got a, a diagram. Um, so this 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 point is is um, x y. So this is some point in the Cartesian coordinate system, just x y. And if we express it in the polar coordinate system, we can express it in terms of um, the distance from the origin, which is r, and then the angle that we turn through theta. And you can see from simple trigonometry that um, y is equal to r sine theta and x equals r cos theta. Um, so that's just how how you transform from the Cartesian to the polar coordinate system. So all I'm going to do is rewrite my integral in terms of this polar coordinate system. Okay. So I've got I've got this integral here, dx dy, and I've just written it in the form of my polar. So I'm going to explain each bit. Um, okay. First of all, I'll look at the limits. Um, this 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 first integral is obviously going to be um, the theta. Um, this um, I'm in um, this is the um, limits for the um, theta. Um, sorry, no. So I've written this in a bit of a um, confusing way. Now this is the in this is the li these are the limits for the um, r, and we c and we know that r can take any value from infinity to zero. Um, the distance from the origin can be anything from infinity to zero. 
and um, we're not taking minus infinity because because in this in this system you can't have a negative distance from the origin that doesn't make any sense so in this double integral here r can take values from zero to infinity and that and that covers everything so this 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 is the same um, um, and also for my um, theta I'm taking uh, um, I'm taking angles from 0 to 2 pi because that covers everything so what you can think of is that in the xy plane I was taking all values of x and all values of y and this is the same as taking all values of r which is all val which is all di um, distances from the um, x-axis um, um, rotated through all angles of theta so it's exactly the same thing uh, of course that's not that's not all um, all that we have to do I've I've um, I've simply substituted um, the above relations into this integral um, double integral. So I've I've so I've let x squared equal um, r cos theta all squared like this plus r sine theta all squared like this, and I've just put my um, d theta dr, which is which is obviously my um, um, integration variables. Um, so 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 this integral is d theta, and then it's dr on the outside. Okay. That's fairly straightforward. Okay, so all I've done here is I've replaced I've, I've replaced um, this. I've just expanded it out, so we can see we've got an r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. Um, you can factorise that, and you know that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is one. So we end up with this. This is looking like a much nicer integral now. We've got um, this integral here, which looks easy to evaluate, and this one, which looks a lot easier to evaluate. Okay, um, so now I'm going to discuss what this j r theta um, r theta actually is. You'll notice that if that, that ideally we want we want this to be two r because if it is then we've got we've got an integral in this in this um, in this form. This is where we're sort of leading to. It's not actually going to be two r but it's going to be pretty close. Okay. This is the definition of the two dimensional Jacobian. Um, it's a determinant of a ma of a matrix of partial derivatives, which is what I've got here. Um, that might sound complicated, but it, it's you, you, the reason that it's, we've got a determinant here is that we're thinking about an area. Uh, what we're doing is we're transforming a rectangle, like I've said, into a into a, a parallelogram. I've, I've put, I haven't put r and theta here. I put du and dv because I'm I'm thinking of transforming from x to the x y space to a uv space, which which can be which can be any particular space. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, the polar coordinate system. So it can be anything. This is just a general matrix. Um, so I'm going to explain a bit more about how this works um, by first looking at single integrals. Okay, if you wanted to integrate this, um, it looks quite difficult th um, to integrate, but you can easily integrate it by making the following substitution: you can say u equals x squared, and then, and then you can say du equals two, two x dx. So therefore, dx is equal to du over two x. Okay, so. You can you can substitute that in, and then you en end up with the integral of sine u du, which is obviously easy to evaluate. But another way of thinking about that is that the in this this integral here is equal to the integral of two x sine u, and then j, which and this j is actually equal to one over two x. Yeah, because that's what we multiply through by to, com to convert the integration variable from dx to du. And you'll see that you can consider this. Um, it's not a partial derivative. It's well, it's it's a full derivative, but um, in the one-dimensional case, this is sort of trivial anyway. Um, what we've got is we've got a, a one-by-one one matrix, um, and the determinant of one-by-one one matrix is equal to d dx du anyway. So we haven't really got much of a problem there. Um, so this is how the Jacobian works in one dimensions, and and you've probably seen this before. In two dimensions, it's just extending that matrix to um, a two-dimensional matrix. Um, you can also think about this as two vectors, um, and the two vectors span a parallelogram, and and we want uh, and we want to find the area of that parallelogram. So it's, it, it's, these these are just different ways of sort of thinking about it. Um, I might do another video explaining how particularly this Jacobian comes about. Um, anyway, if if we substitute if we um, if we start trying to evaluate this Jacobian, so I've, I've written I've written it down now in terms of r and theta. So I've just taken the determinant. This is just the definition of uh, of a matrix determinant two by two. Okay. So now all I'm going to do is simply evaluate the partial derivatives. Okay. So I'm, I've got these two definitions here, which I took from uh, um, from up above earlier. That's just the definition of the polar coordinate system. Partial derivative of, of x with respect to r. 
well that's actually fairly straight that's actually fairly straightforward if we take cos theta as being constant then that's just going to be cos theta because the cos theta has been taken as constant dy over d theta um, well that's that's going to well r is constant in this case that's cos theta multiplied by 3 by the factor r similarly dx d theta is minus r sine theta and dy d um, dr is, is equal to sine theta um, that's fairly straightforward okay um, so what I'm going to do now is just just use the definition evaluate this if you evaluate this you end up with okay dx dr um, so cos theta multiplied by r cos theta minus minus r sine theta multiplied by sine theta which simplifies to r cos squared theta plus r sine squared theta factorize cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1 that becomes r so we know now that j that j is just r so I've, substitute, I've substituted j equals r into this integral here okay now we can evaluate the integral I said I wanted 2r here but I've got r and that's that's acceptable doesn't, um, I, I'm just going to have a correction factor of 2 um, so now this integral is we can evaluate so I'm gonna I'm gonna separate um, this integral I'm gonna um, integrate the theta first from 2 pi to naught and then I'm going to integrate the r variable like this okay um, theta the, this this integral integrates very simply 2 pi um, and then I'm going and then all I'm going to do is so the 2 pi would be in here and then I'm just going to take it out because 2 pi is obviously a constant and then this integral is very simple all we would have is um, well, we can see that we can see that we're going to get something e to the minus r squared, um, and then we can say that e to the minus r squared differentiates to give two r e to the minus r squared. So I'm going to have to have a factor of minus one over two here in order to compensate for that. Okay, so evaluating this between the two limits, infinity and, and zero, gives us okay. Well, e to the power of minus infinity, we're going to say is naught. Um, so e to, um, so so that. So that term sort of goes away. Minus minus a half e to the e to the minus um, naught. Well, e to the naught is one. So that we got so we got two pi zero minus minus half, which is plus a half. So we can say that this is pi. Now originally ab um, up up here. Okay. Here, yeah, we said that we said that the integral of e to the minus x squared dx is equal to the root of this thing here. So I actually need to square root pi to actually get the integral. Because I've evaluated this. So the answer is actually the square root of pi. Um, so that's that so the integral of infinity to minus infinity e to the minus x squared dx is indeed the square root of pi. Um, okay, what I'm going to do now is just go over a little application of this and this is the normal distribution. This is the definition of the normal distribution. This is the probability density function. Okay, the probability density function isn't that useful, but the cumulative density function is useful, and that's the integral of x to minus infinity. So this, so this basically is saying, what's the probability that my value will be less um, than this particular value, x? Now, if I let x equal infinity, then I'm integrate, uh, then I'm, then I'm um, calculating the probability over the whole space, over the whole of the normal distribution, and we know the probability. Um, of any distrib of, of any distribution of, of the t of the total distribution is always one because it, it that that's the definition of of, of probability it's got to be one. So this here should evaluate to equal one. Um, that would be consistent with what we've just done. So I'm going to make the substitution u equals um, x um, um, over root two. Okay. Um, in order to try and evaluate this, you, you'll notice that this is actually a one-dimensional integral now. So, um, magic curving is just one-dimensional, so I don't need to worry too much about that. So, I've got one over root two pi e to the minus u squared because I've let u equal x over root two. So you can see that when you square that, you get um, you get minus x squared over two. So, um, so and the magic curving. Well, obviously, the Jacobian is just going to be. Um, well, well du dx is 1 over root 2 so dx is going to be root 2u so my Jacobian is root 2 take the root 2 out of the integral we know what this is because we've just done it we know that that's the square root of pi and then this obviously all cancels out to equal 1 so everything is consistent